Well, we're going to start with a concept of operations, walking you through kind of how we envision this, how we've built it for clients in the past, talking about how this can integrate with the different sale point IM solutions. It's worth mentioning that this uh, solution, this hybrid integration works with both sale point IIQ as well as the identity now solution. We're going to highlight some of the ServiceNow integration points that includes the integrated risk management solution, software and hardware asset management, as well as application portfolio management. And lastly, we're going to bring to life our hybrid access request integration. Right. And if we, perfect. So just to kind of give the uh, audience here an overview, the way this is envisioned to start is that a user goes into uh, request access within service now so in the green there in the top left the way that we've built these uh, for a lot of our clients is to ask business relevant questions so we're asking you know what facility do you work in you know, what uh, sort of job role do you have like contextual information that can help us determine which roles or entitlements or groups need to be assigned to a particular uh, user and that logical determination that second step there also occurring within service now once we've determined which entitlements are required, we make the necessary API uh, request out to SailPoint saying we need for a particular user these uh, entitlements. Based on how you've configured uh, SailPoint, if it's a connected application, we would then look to do some automated provisioning through the different connectors. And if that is successful, that is the end of the process. If for some reason there's an issue with the connector, we can create a manual error task in ServiceNow to be assigned to the different application teams or identity and access management groups to make sure that this request is fulfilled um, and that the user is assigned the access they need. If this is not a connected application, we can then look to create work items or tasks. This particular one you'll notice is in blue and green. If you're leveraging the service desk connector for ServiceNow, we can create tasks back in ServiceNow. Alternatively, we can create work items in SailPoint. Ultimately, this ends up closing out the ticket with a notification being sent to the user, letting them know that their request has been fulfilled. At this point, I'll hand it over to Cole, who's gonna jump into the system and bring some of this to life. Cole? Awesome, yeah, thanks, Jay. So we're here in an agile demo environment of ServiceNow, and this is what we call the service portal page. So this is something that your typical users are going to be very familiar with. If you're currently using the service catalog from ServiceNow, this is where you would come to request, you know, a, a laptop, any asset, if you need um, a software installed, anything like that. Most of your users are going to be coming to this portal. And so what we've done is we've put a new category into this portal called access requests, where we have each of our applications that a user may be requesting access to. You can see I've got four built here. I've got Copath, I've got HeartLab, Improvata, and Pixis. And just to start, let's go ahead and simulate requesting access for Pixis. So when I open this form up, you'll see it's uh, pretty easy on the eyes. There's not a lot of complicated questions. These are the business facing questions that the, your users are going to know the answers to. So first one right away is, are you looking for new access? Are you wanting to remove access? Are you trying to reactivate some access that you've had previously? We'll go ahead and just select new access. From here, we're able to say, OK, am I a nurse, a physician or a Pixis administrator? What kind of access am I looking for? What's my role in the company? And I'll go ahead and say that I'm a physician. Our next question here is what locations do you require access to? Again, these are the business que questions that your users are going to know the answers to. They, they're not having to browse for a specific entitlement or an active directory group that they would need to know the name of. They're just answering questions that they already know. The last one here is the ability to say, is this a temporary access? Yes or no. If it's temporary, what we can do is we can provide sunset and sunrise dates. We can basically say, I want my access to start, uh, say, two weeks from now, and then I can have it removed at the end of November. Now, once we have all of our questions answered, what we'll do is we'll just click the order now button 
and then we can select who we want to give access to. Who's this request going to be for? And I will select Alan Offerman here. Once we click checkout, the ticket is processed. It's submitted to ServiceNow and the work will start. Now what I've done is I have submitted a ticket previously and you'll see this is what it looks like in the fulfillment or the non portal view of ServiceNow. You can see we have the details up here at the top as far as who's this for, what access is it, what application are we looking at, and then other details of the ticket. More importantly, or we can see that the variables that we selected actually come through the ticket already. So our application access is for a physician, and then we also have our locations for Pixis. If this previous ticket had included the temporary dates, those would show up here as well. Now, ServiceNow natively allows for configuration of approvers. Uh, and those can be done in sequential order or they can be done in parallel. They can also be individual users as an approver or we can complete them through a group of approval process. So you can see right here the first approval that we have generated is for Adam Haro and that's because the user I requested access for, Alan, his manager is Adam. So Adam gets the first approval request to review the ticket and say, does Alan need access to Pixis, yes or no? As an administrator, what I can do is I can come in here and manually approve on behalf of Adam. And then once our page refreshes here, you'll see that we have additional approvers that are available that were generated following our first approval from Adam. And this is where we're talking about the ability to have uh, really, really robust approval configurations based on the specific application. You can see what we actually did was we provided a group approval following our initial approval, and this went to the Pixis Access Approvers group, and these can be defined within ServiceNow using out of the box functionality. The way this is configured is that our three members of that group will receive an email with their approval request, and then they can link the ticket, they can come here and review the details and then either provide approval or rejection. Again, what I'm going to do as an administrator is I will just approve here on behalf of Boris. There we go. And once I reload this form, you'll see that our request became approved. As you can see in the stage, and then you can see that the ticket is going to process. And so what this does is actually allows the IT or the integration with SailPoint to process. And you can see that on the activity log that our ticket was opened, we see the request from Identity IQ, the number that we were looking at. And then about 15 seconds later, it looks like our request was completed. So the logic contained within ServiceNow took a look at the details that we entered on the ticket. Once it got approved, the workflow was triggered and those entitlements that are specific to the questions that we answered. So for a physician at these locations, ServiceNow can calculate what entitlements Active Directory groups you need to belong to, and then those are sent to SailPoint for automatic provisioning. So outside of the approval flow, you can see that the, the fulfillment of this access request was 15 seconds from start to finish. And again, all of those approvals are fulfilled uh, from now, and they're they're inherent to the platform, and they're easy to configure. Now, another ticket that we have here uh, can simulate what we call the um, the air handling. So, you can see I've got a ticket here. This one is for Copath, and we're waiting in the approval process. If I Again, approve on behalf of Adam and reload the form, you'll see that an error was generated. So our provisioning, our connection to Identity IQ did not go through. And so ServiceNow captures those errors and generates an error task for us automatically. And then that task is then assigned to a work group to investigate the issue and then resolve uh, the access request either manually or by reattempting the provisioning. And you can see our task down here 
was generated to our access management group in ServiceNow. And our error message was that SailPoint couldn't identify the target, ide um, target identity cube. So Allen's, uh, his identity cube in SailPoint had an error, we were unable to locate it. And so the integration successfully failed out and provided a task in ServiceNow. The last thing that we want to talk about here in terms of the system is looking at the dashboard that we we can report off of all of our tickets that are being generated, all of our application specific details. You can see here at the top that I have a report that's built showing us all the requests that have been submitted for a specific application. So you can see we've got 23 that were for HeartLab and then so on and so forth for the other applications. We can view the number of requests that are waiting on approval. We can also see the number of currently open access requests and see in what stage of the process they're in. So 14 are pending approval. We have 14 that are currently being fulfilled, and then we have 15 that are approved and are going through follow on tasks uh, following the, uh, the integration with SailPoint. Over here, uh, we're able to pull in information across the platform as far as uh, the implications of our access requests for uh, software asset management, right? We can see of these requests that are currently open, we can see that 13 licenses are going to be consumed by these applications, while we have six remaining that are available if we needed to submit more access requests. We can also see access requests mm -hmm. as they're related to uh, the application portfolio management entry. So we can cross-reference our tickets, our access tickets, to the application APM module. And then we can also see the number of requests that are related to high criticality or uh, it, severe high rated business apps that we need to keep track of. And you can see we've got 15 of those here. And then the last report down here is just showing us any tickets that may have encountered an error with SailPoint. You'll see all of ours are related to Copath. So this no notifies us that we need to go take a look at the Copath application and see where our error is coming from.